friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here to finally clear up the confusion that I've had for years on the difference between extracts and tinctures, and hopefully to pass that on to you. And now after finally finding a site that really laid it out quite clear for me, I was able to figure out why my confusion and that what I typically make is an extract rather than a tincture. So when I first started my channel, I thought all extracts were tinctures, but I was actually backwards because all tinctures are extracts, but not all extracts are tinctures. I also thought back then that that tinctures meant they were stronger and more potent than extracts. Well, that is backwards, but I also understand why my confusion was there. Because here's the one thing that I did have right, is that tinctures are typically made with a higher proof alcohol, such as vodka or even Everclear, where extracts are usually made from things like uh, vinegar, glycerin, and so on. I make four main extracts. Sometimes I'll do others. And the, the two that get used the most actually are the one for pain and the one for the deep sleep slash muscle relaxer. It actually gets used more for muscle relaxer than for helping with sleep, but it works great for both. And I, by the way, have recipes on all these and the recipes have changed throughout the year. So I'm gonna be making sure I link to the most current ones. And then I also have the antibiotic one, which a lot of people have seen that video where I made it with nasturtium leaves, which is still my favorite way to do it. But just like with any of these other extracts, it's about finding the herbs that work best for you or that you can grow or get a hold of because, not every, because a lot of people are having a hard time finding nasturtium leaves but that is also why I started putting together lists. So I have a list on the many different herbs that you can use for their antibiotic properties, which also tend to be antiviral at the same time. So I'll, even though I'll link to all the, these three videos here, I'll also link you to where I do the list of things for pain and the one for the list of antibiotics. And then the fourth one is my vitamin extract and i think i have a video where i was talking more about extracts that i actually showed making this particular one now honestly <laughs> i tend to forget to take that one quite a bit even though i made it to be a daily supplement i always forget about it because i usually take supplements in the morning i don't like taking extracts in the morning i just don't unless i absolutely have to so I'm gonna be following this printout that I got, put a link to it down below so you can also find this in written form and more details that are on that page, just explaining better about the differences here. Now that I'm so excited, I finally have this figured out. At least I hope I do this time. So anyway, extracts, generally speaking, are tend to be more concentrated than tinctures. And I understand why now. Because when you're making extracts or fluid extracts, what you're typically using are dried herbs. It's very rare people will use fresh herbs in making an extract. And in that case, there you're using a higher ratio of the herb to whatever solvent you're using. So typically it's a one-to-one -one ratio, which is usually what I do anyway, at least when I'm going by site. So for example, I'll typically fill my jar about half full or more of the herbs I am in extracting and then I'll top it off with the solvent that I'm using in that extract. Now, if you're going by weight, that's probably not gonna be a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you wanna go by weight, you might wanna weigh out your herbs and then weigh out your solvent and then combine them together. Now extracts, they call this, which I don't really agree with, they call it more tedious, which I guess it is in the sense that you do have to dehydrate the herbs first. And which is not a big deal to me because all through the season when my herbs are coming in, I'm always dehydrating herbs so I can have them on my shelf to make extracts whenever I want to. And also because it, it does require shaking, even after you strain it when it's fully extracted, you do wanna shake it well before using because you're gonna have a lot more sediment on the bottom and you wanna get all that in there when you go to use that. You're gonna strain out most of the herbs, but there's always gonna be bits and pieces that are in there and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's a good idea to shake it also while it's extracting. So because you're using a higher ratio of herbs to solvent, that's what makes it more concentrated and potent than a standard tincture. 
Now for a solvent, you can use vinegar, you can use homemade wine. Some people even use just plain water, which I personally wouldn't because it's not gonna have the shelf life. And some people will use glycerin, which is when you're using a glycerin as a solvent, you have to do three parts glycerin to one part water. And I've never had issues with it spoiling. They say the shelf life is about four months, but you also got to give it a couple months to extract. So what does that mean? Does that mean it's only good for two months once it's done? But I've never had issues for the, from the ones that I've made with the glycerin water. And that includes my flavored extracts as well. But my favorite way to do it, which I think is also healthier and it's cheaper in the sense that I'm using my own homemade wine, it, it's a better flavor than vinegar. I used to use homemade vinegar, but couldn't stand taking any of the extracts made from vinegar. So I started using homemade wine and then down the road started mixing it with honey. So I might do a one-to-one -one ratio when I'm making that solvent. So half, so 50% wine to 50% honey. You could use just honey alone, but you would still have to water it down some. So two to three parts honey to one part water is what you're going to need, very similar to what you're going to do with your glycerin. But you know the shelf life is going to be good because honey has an indefinite shelf life. And I found that honey added even to like my elderberry syrup, I add the raw honey in after it's got down to room temperature after making it. And not only does that add benefits on its own, it also is a natural preservative in there. And I don't have to use any sugar to preserve that syrup. And I've had elderberry syrup last for four years in the refrigerator before we finally used it up and it was still good and still worked great. So honey is a natural preservative and it does add a nice flavor. So for instance, the pain extract, if you go back to one, my very earliest video where I did a pain extract, I was using vinegar and mostly feverfew and some other herbs and it was horrible tasting, but it worked. But through the years, I found better ways to make it just as effective to keep that good powerfulness that the fever few adds and using more herbs to add to that such as uh, cat mint and echinacea and valerian leaf and then using the mixture of homemade wine and it doesn't have to be homemade wine I say that because i do make it myself from our own grapes or apples or even blackberries that we pick wild and it's virtually free when I do that, and it tastes so much better than vinegar. But yes, you can use store-bought wine if you if you don't make your own wine or have access or a way to do that. And it saves a lot of money. It's a lot cheaper than buying something like vodka or Everclear from the store. But anyway, the, the, the two combined, the wine honey mixture has been my favorite. Now, one I haven't tried that I think would be suitable to use for children because they say you shouldn't give honey to children under one, though there are countries that do it. But if you're uncomfortable with that, then you can do, I would say, a maple syrup. And I, I don't even think you would have to water it down because maple syrup is typically pretty watered down. It may not have the same shelf life, though, unless you vacuum seal it between uses as your honey does. So that'd be something to consider, but I think that would be a safer choice for babies and then even for children. And it's got a nice flavor. And I haven't tried it yet, but I do think it would work great. What I'm saying here is everything I have here is an extract, but when it comes to tincture, so let's talk a bit about that. A tincture is made with, like I said, a higher proof alcohol, but you're using a greater amount of solvent in that but it doesn't necessarily make it more potent you can use dried herbs but the nice thing about that is you can use fresh herbs from straight from the garden if you want to do that but i've used i've made extracts using fresh herbs from the garden and i have one that's been sitting on top of my refrigerator for over a year and it's still good and i made it with fresh rosemary and honey i think i used wine in that too honey and wine but anyway, that's another form there. The only thing I would say I wouldn't agree with on this is it says in here that a tincture doesn't have the shelf life as of an extract, which I don't agree with because if you're using vodka or Everclear, they have they naturally have an indefinite shelf life. So there's no reason why that should spoil because it would preserve the herbs, even the fresh herbs you put in there. But you're typically using like a one to four to six part ratio. So one part herbs, fresh herbs, to four to six parts of your alcohol. Now, here's the reason why I don't prefer using high proof alcohol. One is flavor. I do not care for the flavor of an extract made with vodka. 
And even with my flavored extracts now, I don't use vodka anymore. I use a combination of, well, like for vanilla especially, I use a combination of rum and honey. And I've tried using my homemade wine for that and didn't like it as much as the rum. But for all my other extracts, I use homemade wine and honey for those. So the, you know, the flavored extracts. But I, I don't care for the taste of vodka. And here's the other thing. Vodka, as I said earlier, is more expensive than wine, even if you had to go buy wine. It, and then certainly if you're making your own wine, it is way more expensive. And when you can be... When you can make your own wine, you're a little more self-sufficient as well. And yes, you can make your own vodka, but you still have to have a still to do that, which you can make your own out of an old pressure cooker or pressure canner. So, but I, I just prefer flavor-wise, I find that using it this way instead of using vodka, I find it's just as effective as when I was using the vodka for making tinctures. So then my other thing that I personally have issues with, and I know a lot of people do this, and it's going to be a matter of choice. Some people really like to use Everclear. I personally would not. That's just my personal choice. And I know there's a lot of herbalists that agree that Everclear can be so powerful that it can damage the benefits of the herbs. But it may also depend on the herb you're using. Some herbs, herbs are just more delicate than others and don't need so much of a powerful alcohol to extract and get the properties out. But if you're doing something like where you're extracting the properties from a woody type substance like roots and barks, then I could see Everclear having its place when it comes to that. And I have, when I made the cinchona bark extract, I did use vodka in that because of that purpose. I hate it. We have, we've taken it a few times, can't stand the flavor, but it is powerful and it does work. But that is something that rarely ever gets used. We just have it on hand in case we need it. And I have a couple of videos, by the way, on cinchona bark and quinine and quercetin. They're two different videos that go hand in hand that I'm going to recommend you watch, by the way. So I'll link to both of those down below because I think you'll find them very interesting as I was doing some deep research into where you get quinine from and no it doesn't come from citrus peels like some people are claiming that's quercetin quercetin and quinine have similar properties even though they're different types of compounds they do something similar in the body and they're both zinc ionophore so that's partly where the the confusion comes from between quinine and quercetin on top of the fact they both start with q u <laughs> now as far as the time you allow these things to extract whether it be a tincture or an extract or even an oil infusion i always go for a minimum of two months with some things you can go less than that i think specifically if you're using higher proof alcohols you can go maybe six weeks and some things you can even just let extract for a month. But I always try to shoot for two months because I think that's just a good number to always shoot with. I don't have to remember what's what as far as, you know, oh, this only needs six weeks. This only needs 30 days. This needs two months. I just say two months. And so I don't touch it until then. And even then, if I don't need it after two months, I'll still leave it until I'm ready. If, if one of these gets empty, like one of the ones that's probably the antibiotic, which is funny because it's the one we use the least, that's the, the one that's the lowest. It's probably because we use these other ones more. And so I'm making them more and topping them off more. So once this gets empty, then the one that I have extracting in the back has probably been sitting back there for a year. I'll then strain it out and then add it to my bottle here. So I am not worried about any of them going bad because all of the things I use, the wine, the honey, or even in the rare cases of vodka, are natural preservatives and those things are not going to spoil. And I almost forgot to talk about the amounts that you take. Again, this is gonna be dependent on you, but when it comes to extracts, um, I typically take maybe a half to a full shot depending on what it is and what I need it for. So a lot of times when I'm doing the pain one or the, the sleep muscle relaxer one, I might only take a quarter of a shot. And so that's gonna be maybe about 10 millimeters, maybe a tablespoon-ish. So if you're making a tincture and you're using vodka, 
you will need to take a little more of that than you would one made out of Everclear. But what this said, because it is a more, the extract is more concentrated because the amount of herbs to solvent, you actually take less of those than you would of a tincture. I'm not sure I fully agree with that. I think it's also going to very much depend on the type of tincture or extract you're taking, just like I explained here. If I'm gonna take the anti antibiotic, if I feel I ever need it, I'm gonna take a full shot of that. But with the others, it's oh, it's gonna just gonna be variable depending on how, how strong the pain is. You know, if it's just a mild headache, which I usually don't take anything for that anyway, but let's just say if it is just some kind of mild pain, I'm just gonna take a little bit. If I feel that it's a, if it's a real powerful pain, I might take a full shot and I'm not concerned about it and I can handle it because it's not vodka or Everclear. It's, you know, it's a, it's only 50% wine. And so it's not an issue. Somebody else might have an issue with that. Somebody else might need to take less. Somebody else might need to take more. And it's all going to be variable. For me, I can't see taking more of an Everclear-based tincture than I would of my own homemade extracts where I use wine and honey. Not only would I absolutely hate it, I'm very sensitive to alcohol these days. And I would hate the way that made me feel. So it's, again, it's going to be all... I think you got to tailor it to suit you. I just recommend playing with it a little bit and finding out what works best for you because amounts are definitely very much variable, but always start small. So I would say never go more than a teaspoon when you're first trying something out. And then you can build from there and you'll find the amount that works according to your what you need it to work for. I hope that helps, but don't forget to also check this link I'll be putting down below if you want to read more because it goes on about the pros and cons. And really, when it comes right down to it, what you make is going to be a matter of preference. It does not mean that a tincture is better than an extract or an extract is better than a tincture or how you make it or what solvent you use is better. No, what be what's best is what's best for you and what works best for your family and what you can handle. Like, for example, not everyone can or should have alcohol. So they shouldn't be using wine, vodka, or Everclear at all. They should be sticking with something like honey and water, glycerin and water, or even the maple syrup, like I mentioned. And, and if anyone's tried the ma using maple syrup as an extract solvent, I would love to hear your results. I should just try it sometime so I can see how well it works. Maybe I'll do the pain one with that at some point and just make a small bottle because that's the one we're most likely to use. So anyway, any thoughts or suggestions or ideas or questions, please put them in comments down below. And if I don't answer them, I'm sure there's other very knowledgeable people on making extracts and tinctures that can come in and help you with that in case I miss it because I've been missing a lot more comments lately due to time and watching the ground babies and so on. So anyway, but I'll still do my best to get in there and help give you the right answer or direct you to other videos I have on any of these topics. And don't forget, you can also do a search on my page for any specific topic you would like to learn more about. And that's it for today. So thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.